Hi everyone and welcome back to 7spot. Hope you remember me, I haven't been on the channel for a little while, but coming up really soon, we have got the biggest kit car show in the UK of the year and that is Malvern. And to do a little bit of a preview of it, of it I'm really pleased to say we've got Jack from Complete Kit Car with us. Hello Jack. Hi guys, you okay? Yeah, How, how's it going Jack? Because, you know, it's what, nine months since you took over uh, complete kit car from Adam. So, is it has, how's it been? Exciting, frightening, terrifying? Uh, it's been a bit of everything, really. Uh, we're a bit of a one man band at the moment. We, I mean, Adam's still a, a freelancer. We've got a few other people working with us, but really, this is where most of it happens. And uh, so, yeah, this is where I do the work and cry the tears and all that sort of thing, really. But yeah, it's, it's, it, no, it has been good. It has been really good. I was going to say, any exciting things you can tell us that you've got coming up in the magazine soon? We have something very exciting that's going to happen, but we, we can't really talk about, about that now. But basically, expect the same sort of thing for a little while, but it's going to be a bigger mag towards the end of the year, but I can't really go into that. But yeah, this, there is some big things happening, but it's all sort of got to happen in secret. Because we're such a small team, it, those things take time. So, All sounds really exciting. So... If you want to uh, find out what happens with CKC, you've obviously got to uh, um, subscribe to their magazine. But today, we oh, there it is. But yeah, if you, if you want to see this, this is our May issue, which will still be out when this comes out. But then the issue after this uh, will be going on shop shelves pretty quick. So you can always buy issues off our website. We, we keep stock of back issues. So, so the um, National Kit Car Show will be at the Three County Showground at Malvern. So it's just off the M5, really easy to get to, and that will be on the 1st and 2nd of June. Free entry for kit car drivers, and there's going to be uh, camping going on. The facilities, I know from personal experience, are really good as well, and there's usually entertainment on the Saturday night as well. So it's a good weekend event. So if you're going to make any one of the year, this is the one to go for. But what I'm going to do with Jack now is we're going to have a quick run through uh, some of the manufacturers that are going to be displaying, just give a light touch to each of them and, you know, see what they might be bringing along to the show. So top of the hill, I was going to bring up XCS, who are one of the show sponsors, along with Howden Insurance. So, you know, they'll be bringing along, I imagine, their 427 and the Diechi or Diechi. Um, my Italian's not very good, Jack. I believe it's Diechi. Um, I'm, I'm not 100 either, to be fair on that. Um, but it's it's Italian for ten. I know that, so that's that's good. But yeah, that's their seven S Roadster with the uh, well, you've got the option of camber compensation suspension, which is yeah, it's a really trick bit of kit that, and and so is the four two seven. Um, so it's going to be good to see those guys there. Do you know, do we know how they're getting on with that length and four two seven? I know they were starting to work on it last year. Is that something that we think might be coming to market soon? I wouldn't be surprised if it's there. It's something I'd like to chat to them about when it is there, if it is there. Because, um, yeah, that was a, that's, that's going to be quite an interesting thing, an actual Cobra that you can fit into. I mean, the others the others you can fit into, but this is going to be something for, let's say, the bigger chaps, the taller chaps. They should be quite excited about that. Yeah, at five foot six, I've never had a problem, so I, I can't see what all the fuss is about. No, no, exactly the same. I'm sure I asked too, so that's, that's fine for us. But, yeah, maybe for... The basketball players among us, it's it's going to be perfect. Okay, next up, I've got uh, quite a long-established uh, manufacturer now, uh, is GBS, Great British Sports Cars, who will there, I'm sure will be there with their Zero, but they also always seem to bring along a massive range of accessories and upgrades, don't they? Yeah, so they'll, probably, they'll be there with their kit spares arm, and they, they sell a lot of things that, really really suit their cars but a lot of it is uh, you know you can fit it to, to basically anything and if you can't you speak to richard there and uh, i'm sure we'll come up with a solution because they're, they're really into the engineering side of things even that comes down to simple things like um, seat rollers and stuff like that i think they're one of the great sort of kick or recent kit car success stories because i think richard took that on in about 2006 so that's what now 18 years and it just seems to have grown really well over all these years doesn't it yeah, I mean they're they're the local manufacturer to me because they're based in in Ollerton sort of thing, and it's it's sort of mad to see how far that sort of come on from the from the Robin Hoods and stuff. Nothing like, nothing against the Robin Hoods. Do you do you still have your Robin Hood? I do, I do. Tread carefully, tread carefully, young man. 
Yeah, okay, so I'll be very careful what I say here. Um, but but no, no, the Zero is a terrific bit of kit. Um, so, so yeah, it'd be good to see that there, um, their, their demonstrator. And up next uh, is, well, is, is he describes himself when I chat to him, industry legend, um, Jerry Hawkridge of Hawk Cars with their Stratos replica and, of course, the, the Cobra replicas. Yeah, so it's going to be good to see Jerry. I mean, he's, he's obviously an industry legend, or leg end, as he prefers, as you say. Um, yeah, he'll, 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 he'll be sat around the cars, and they um, yeah they, they usually have a good selection of cars and sort of mix it up a bit as well, so that'd be, that'd be quite nice to see. And, and last year, the one that really caught my eye, uh, which I know he was very proud of, was that Stratos with the, the steel centre tub and a Ferrari engine in it. So you can't really get too much sort of more authentic than that really can you yeah what's nice about that car is it's it's authentic but not to the point of um unreliability like i don't, I don't know if any stratus uh, replica well not replica regular stratus owners will be watching but um but yeah I, I i imagine that's a safer bet than than an original that car so so it'd be interesting to see if it's moved on at all or um but i mean as it is it's beautiful so but as for the whole industry that that what your comment there sort of reflects Across the board, you look at the GT40s, the Cobras, the Stratosers, you're getting that classic motoring with modern reliability, which you know is, is something people sort of really expect nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, if you get a factory build, you'll be guaranteed something that is a lot more usable, and that's even before you get into the fact that you wouldn't want to ding one of these, one of the originals. But the the other thing is, if you choose to build it yourself, um, you know, as long as you trust yourself, sort of thing. You, you know, this is going to be as good as you can build it. So you're likely to care more about your car build than, I don't know, someone back in the 60s working on the production line. There's no chance of getting a Friday night car sort of thing. Next up, I've got Quantum. And Rob Hancock, he's like a human dynamo, that bloke, I think, sometimes, because he took on the, the replica car, and which was, you know, a pretty good product. It was next to Stuart Mills one, really great. And he probably packed it all up and completely re remade it, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an amazing job what he's what he's done with that car. He he took me through the chassis and there's it's there's, 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 there's a, where the suspension mounts are much stronger, it's, there's much more torsional rigidity there. And while he's done that, he's also managed to free up a couple of inches, which again, it's not really an issue for you or me, but in the interior, there's, there's a lot more room. And I mean, people, I think if it's the same as it was at the Classic Motor Show, They'll have the chassis next to the new bodywork, um, and yeah, it's it's a work of art, and the new, and the new bodywork it, it it looks cracking. And the other thing that we should say is that the old, if you do prefer the old replica style, or you already own a replica but you've not registered it yet through IBA, is that chassis fits the old body, and they are still selling selling the original replica body as well, if, if that's what you prefer. Well, yeah, and it was it was I thought it was quite interesting because. Um, back at Newark, we interviewed Stuart Mills, and it was one thing I questioned him about. About obviously, it was one of his products, and I know Stuart was, you know, very proud of all the work he'd done. And I thought, well, what's he going to think of what Rob's done to it? And he was really chuffed because he said he'd just sort of taken it, I think, more or less to the next level. And and when you actually put them side by side, you could see the vision that was in Rob's head to try and create a more rounded shape and and so on. So I I think personally, he's done a real cracking job there. Yeah, no, I, 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 I do too. I, um, I mean, we can't wait to drive it. But the, but the thing is, is that they're, they seem to be selling, selling really well to the point, point where I, I, I don't know how long it's going to take for a demonstrator. It seems as soon as they start a car, that's it's, it's already sold before it's finished. So it's not great for us in the magazine business, but, but it's good, It's really good. It's really good for Quantum. <laughs> I was going to say that's really great for Quantum, isn't it? So he's not going to grumble. And of course, the other thing he's got. The whole back catalogue of quantum cars there as well but the one that's probably the most available if somebody want one is probably the extreme of those which is another 7s roadster but with a stainless steel monocoque, monocoque body or chassis sorry that's something a bit different as well isn't it yeah and um, i'm guessing they'll also have their their hard top that they showed off last year for that car as well which is um an interesting idea if if anybody sort of wants a hardtop seven, and I'm, I'm not saying that in a jokey way, like um, I think it looks, I think it looks really good, and yeah, I guess it's, it is a nice option for someone that because we do have some hardy kit car owners that do use their cars all year round, so it'd be ideal for them, really. So, 
Well, next up, I've got, well, you mentioned GBS local to you. I've got one that's local to me, and that is Crendon, also known as Absolute Horsepower, which is Anthony, down our way here with the uh, CR427. And that, that's a really, you know, Anthony not only turns out a lot of really nice cars, and I actually I saw one at a show about a week ago, uh, which was actually a Pilgrim, which I haven't seen one of those for some time. It had only just been finished, but he'd done a real nice job on that. Um, but also he's got the rights to the Crendon car as well now, isn't he? So he's doing some cracking work down there. Yeah, the, th the thing about the, the, the Crendon is that famously it's only available with the Ford V8, you know, the, the proper one. So it's interesting in the, in the sense that usually with kit cars, it's sort of anything goes, but they're they're really big on knowing it needs to be Ford engine, which is, it, it's, it's, it's a nice idea. Like I know that's, it's very popular in America to say that these cars should have a Ford engine and it's, it's quite cool that we have a manufacturer over here that follows that tradition really, so. But it's also great that we've got that range of manufacturers of, you know, Cobras, and, and you can sort of have what you want to an extent. You could go, you know, it's not as though you've got five or six manufacturers that are all producing the same thing. You've got this great um, market where if you want the original Ford engine and, you know, as close to the original as you can, you probably go to um, a Crendon or maybe to Hawk. But then you've got the other manufacturers that will do you something a bit different with a more, more modern engine in it. So you, you can choose what you want. That's what's really important about this show is if you're in the market for a Cobra replica or a 7S Groves or something along those lines, is this is your opportunity to see them almost side by side. You know, you can sit in each, you can chat with each manufacturer and go away and sort of make your own decision. There's room for everyone. Um, so really, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you know, if you're in the market for something this year or next year, or just planning your dream build, this is the show to go to because, um, because really, otherwise you're gonna be traveling up and down the country, and yeah, it's it's really good, and no, you know, and nobody will care if you come back to another one and sit in it again, sort of thing. This is your place to do the comparisons. And next up, I've got uh, one which is now uh, quite a, an established name. I know it's sort of moved around a couple of places, but they are quite prolific producers and, and they're working on cars, and that's NK. And I mentioned they're going to have their RX-5 kit, which is their sort of single donor MX-5, but they've got quite a range going on there, haven't they? Oh, they've they've got it. They've got a, they've got a huge range, and um, and they're always experimenting, and they've always they've, all, they've you know they've got they've got plenty of kits, and you know they've um, they've got the Phoenix and everything like that. But um, what's going to be quite interesting with MK is if you didn't make it to the classic motor show, is that this will be your first event to see the new nose cone. So the the whole front of the car looks looks different and i think it's really good what they've done with it and i'm not just saying that because of a vested interest I, I do think the front of that car has has evolved in a very nice way it's, it's a bit more like the cup cars at atomic racing who are one of their sort of partners are making and and yeah and it's it's also in quite an unusual color for mk it's not a larry sort of orange or anything like that and it's not a white it's a it's a proper sort of british racing green almost and yeah that car looks really nice and I've, yeah everyone should go and have a look at it really and, and that's interesting because that over the years, quite a lot of people have had a, a go at doing a slightly different um, nose for the 7S cars. And to be honest, I can't think of one that jumps to my mind that actually works. So it's great that they've come up with something that actually does seem to have, you know, fit the bill properly. It's, it's a very subtle change, but because the car is so simple anyway, it's a very noticeable change. And, it, and it's something that's retrofitable. So, you know, if you already owned an MK Indy, this is something that you could realistically fit to your car if you if you're looking to sort of upgrade your car because that's the other thing is this is the show if you already own a kit car to look out for upgrades and changes because a lot of the things that the manufacturers are doing are retrofitable well we're about halfway through our list here jack so i thought maybe we'd take a little bit of a divert and talk about some of the other bits and pieces that are going on at the show and of course one big thing that everyone who's either been to stone in its uh the show's previous format or to Mulburn last year is how strong the, the club areas are at this show. Oh yeah, this is the big club event. I mean, you if you if you go if you if you come this weekend, you'll be seeing people having their annual general meetings all over the club tents and stuff. This is the spot where everybody meets. Um, and that's the other thing is if you're interested in classic kit cars, these are the people to talk to because chances are if it's if it's a well remembered kit, it will it will be there and there will be owners to tell you everything about it because everyone's you know they they love their cars and it's 
they're always after new members and younger members. And yeah, this is the, this is the show to go to, to see, see the whole history of the industry, which is 75 years old, really. So, so yeah, the, the club stands are worth, definitely worth a, worth a visit. And the other great thing is there's a lot of um, kits that are sort of have been out of production for quite some time. And you know, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of things like, uh, JBAs and Rickmans and so on, and they've still got a really strong following. So if you've got one of those cars, you've got other owners you can talk to, or if you you think of the buying one, these are the guys to speak to, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you'll see the GTMs, you'll see you'll see you'll you'll see pretty much everything, and also there'll be some surprises there. I think um, last year there was a there was a Falcon that showed up, an old Falcon shell, sort of a Ford Special from way back when that was there. That people basically thought they'd they'd all sort of disappeared, or they were you know they they weren't you know they never really went into production. It's like no, this is the shell. It was it was an unf- it wasn't even a finished kit. It was an unfinished kit that someone could go out and build. I mean, I wouldn't dare do it, but it's, there's always something interesting to see there, and you'll see people traveling from all over Europe. I know that a lot of people come over from the Netherlands, and they'll bring their you know some people bring their specials, so just unique cars they've built. It's n- not necessarily only kit cars that are going to be there. It's it's going to mainly be cars that people have built at home, but there's, there's going to be all sorts, and there's going to be classics there too. Because I think if, if you have a classic registered before 1980, you get through, through the gates for free. So, And I'm glad you mentioned classics because I think you've got something going on regarding classic kit cars, haven't you, Jack? We do. And all, uh, basically, we put a shout-out because we have a, our own marquee this year, the Complete Kit Car Marquee, and um, we're going to be doing a bit with the cycle carts, who are going to be... You know the, the the nice little go karts that you sort of build and you follow their regulations. They're going to be exhibiting their cars, driving around a course, but they're going to have um, some cars in with us. But then the other thing is we're going to do a display, which is going to be full of classic kit cars with their owners. Just just and everything's going to have a plinth. It's, it's going to be basically a sort of history of kit cars, but we're not we're not doing it in decades. Things like this. It's, just, it's just bits that we picked out that are interesting. And one car that should be there is uh, one champions. Uh, First low cost, the one that he used to write the Haynes, the Haynes book, you know, has built a build a kit car for less than two hundred fifty pounds. So that's that's going to be. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that, and it's going to be with me all weekend, really. So I'm going to see a lot of it. Well, moving on, I've got next up probably I think the only one I could class as an international manufacturer coming to the show, and that is John Cox of JK Cars coming over from I believe Belgium, isn't he, with his. Uh, Cobra, and I think he has still got available the the the. I think it's the Rush as the replica, the Seven S replica as well. Seven S roads, yeah, and he, yeah, and, and I think I think they're still doing the Daytona as well. Um, Daytona replica, um, yeah. So yeah, Dax are going to be there. That's um, that's going to be well. Yeah, this is this is this is your best opportunity to chat with chat with John about the Dax kits. Um, so it'd be, it'd be good to see him. Um, and he usually puts on a good display too. It, it does. You, you've got some really nicely prepared cars there that we uh, we saw last year. So, yeah, he's a really great addition to the show. And it, it shows the strength of the show that people are coming over from the continent to to exhibit as well. Yeah, I mean, there, there's nothing really. I mean, there, there are events that so they love a bit of um, GRP over, you know, sort of in France and, and in the Netherlands and Germany and all those sort of places. But there's there's no real dedicated show for the hardcore kit fanatics, so they they will make the trip. Um, and in fact, it's quite fun to look at the kit cars just to, just to find the foreign plates because because some of them look quite quite cool on the uh, on Dutch plates and things like that. So, okay, next up, I've got something that is completely unique, and you're probably going to guess what I'm going to throw into the uh, arena this time. It's DJC and uh, Dan with his uh, WR three three seater Subaru. Exoskeletal um, missile, I suppose, is the best phrase I could come up with. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so, um, so, really, I mean, it's, 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 it's. I hate, I hate using the word inspired. Clearly inspired by the aerial atom, but at a much more affordable sort of price point. You know, if you build one yourself, and um, yeah, I mean, that sub, that Subaru power plant. If you know what you're doing with it, and they know what they're doing with it. You can get some mad horsepower out of that, and yeah, like you say, a three seater. It's uh, it, it's great if you have two little ones that want to come along with you as well, and also you got the central driving positions. So that's great. And the the other thing with that is that uh, Danny runs that business. 
uh, you know, this is a, a small part of his business. He's got this massive side of, of engineering and he brings that, you know, to the manufacturer of this car and the, and the quality of it is, you know, it's quite stunning, isn't it? Yeah, no, it, it, it really is. Um, I mean, I mean, to be fair, but it's, it's, it's the same with, with a lot of these sort of manufacturers. So same with GBS and stuff is that for, for some of these companies, the, the sports cars is only a, a small part of what they do. That, and the reason they do it is for the, for the fun of it sort of thing. You know, it's, it's not an easy business building cars, but there's so many people that are drawn to it. And it's the, it's the engineering that draws these people. So there's, you'll see a lot of trick stuff that you will not usually see on a production car just because it's it's not mass producible but yeah so but i mean yeah the uh djc is a is a great example of that and you'll you'll see some you'll see some great components on on the car they bring up and on to the manufacturer if any if last year's anything to go by will be one have one of the biggest number of cars on their stand and that is ak with combination of the gt40 or as they call it the ak40 uh their ak47 cobra replica and also the um possibly the ss but we're not quite sure what, um, whether we'll see that or not no like i say they've 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 got a good group of replicas and also sort of a, a bit of an unusual one it, it, to say that they have um they have the cobra replica they have the gt40 and potentially um the, the the jaguar um yeah that i mean I, I i have no clue what what they'll bring but whatever it is it will be something that's that's worth looking at and it's it's certainly something if you're wanting to build something that's a bit more you than the original that's 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 a stand to go and look at because there's been some incredible builds some incredible liveries and yeah there's, there's sort of there's sort of nothing you can't do with any of those kits really so and I think this, you know, it's a good point to reflect on the fact that uh, in the you know past, and I'm going back sort of 20, 25 years, maybe the kit car industry possibly didn't have the best reputation for quality and some of the stuff of how it was produced and, and so on. But now it's, it's such a transformation of the industry. There's no bad kits out there anymore. And everything is a, such of a stunning high quality from, from all the manufacturers out there because they know in this modern consumer market, they need to produce something that's really top end, don't they? Yeah, and I mean, the other thing is, apart from the body conversion sort of kits, is everything has to pass the IBA test. And it's, I mean, if anyone's read the manual and it's always growing, it's, it's, it's super stringent. You are, you're not going to fly under the radar. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's basically... So, you know, some people say, "Oh, there's not as many manufacturers anymore." It's, just, it's it, the ones that remain are the ones that can build the kits that can pass that test, and it's important that we have that test because it. As soon as you've got that that pass, you know that your car is fit for the road, and it's it's up to the standard. You know where you get where you're going to be safe, not just enjoyable, but actually, you know, this, this car is safe for you and also for the people. So yeah, no, the 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 level of quality in the industry is continues to rise and it's partly because the manufacturers really care but it's also partly to do with the the chip the test is it's becoming ever more I, would, I don't want to say difficult because these kits are designed to pass them but it's becoming more and more difficult for manufacturers which is only good for the consumer really and, and i think yeah i can remember back maybe you you might have been possibly instilled in short trousers then jack but when there was all the talk of sva as it was when it first came in i think 97 so 27 years ago so um, you might have been a few years younger then. And uh, it was all this sort of horror stories of it was going to kill the kit car market. It was the end of it and, and everything else. And it's actually done the opposite. It's taken, you know, kit cars to a whole new level because, as you say, the manufacturers had to change. Either they left the market or they changed, which is really the ones that are remaining, and, and raised the level of their product to a point where it was relatively straightforward for people to build a car and to get it through IBA. Yeah, it, it not only improved the quality, but because of the test being such a daunting thing, it, it meant that the manuals got better. It, it meant that basically it went for kit cars went from being something that you had to know basically how your car was put together and put it there. But there are kits out there and these manufacturers produce these kits. Not not all of the kits are the easiest thing. Some some of these are a challenge, but only only because people sort of want a challenge and you sort of make it as much of a challenge as you want to by the modifications you make. But 
but really there's most of these kits any anyone who's willing to learn can learn and build their own car and that's the sort of the joy of the industry now where before it was only really for the hardened mechanic and that really leads us on nicely to our next manufacturer who is probably the one you would point people in if they were looking for for an entry level kit and that's mev yes no absolutely and um the interesting thing about Mev is we've we've featured a lot of Mevs over the years and a lot of build stories is we meet just as many people that want us to build a kit car as we've met people that have had Mazda MX-5s and everyone who's ever owned a Mark 1 MX-5, I owned a Mark 1 MX-5 and a Mark 2 MX-5 is that they, they rust ridiculously. And the, the great thing about this kit is, is it doesn't use the bodywork, it uses the mechanicals and the power plant frame. And it is, yeah, it, it, it really is painted by numbers sort of thing. It's... It is the beginner kit, really, um, and it and it looks great. And also, they have the I, Master RX Eight kit, the Exocet RX now, which is a bit of a monster, really. So, yeah, it's it's well worth having a look at their stand this year. Yeah, I, I agree. I think if you want something that's that little bit different, certainly an Exocet with a rotary RX Eight engine, you're not going to pull up to, uh, alongside another one of those in Sainsbury's car park, are you? No, and I know the the MX five ones are the the strongest sellers, but I, I do want to see more people take the jump to the RX because it's a brilliant engine, and and for all of its problems, having a lighter car to push, it's yeah, it, it's it's sort of the best bridge between a car engine kit car and a motorcycle engine kit car. It revs beautifully, and yeah, it's, it sounds terrific as well. If you ever get to hear it, I mean, obviously these cars are going to be on static displays, but if you ever get the chance to to listen to an Exit RX, it just it sounds great. And also the donors are so cheap. You can, if you've got on eBay now and look for Master RX eights, you are going to find you're going to be pretty amazed at how cheap you can pick a road worthy example of one of those cars. So going from Mev very much at the the entry end of the market, we've got one more towards the top end, which is Tornado, and they must be one of the longest established manufacturers out there. And you know they've got a really nice um, GT forty replica, which they call the TSC forty. And it's got um, very chassis options. There's a steel space frame one. There's an aluminium honeycomb one. And also the, the carbon fiber one as well, isn't there? Yeah, there is. So so really, um, if you're after a GT40 replica, this is the show to go to because you'll be able to chat with Tornado about their options. You can chat to AK about their options. I mean, these companies are all rivals, but it's, it's not quite as cutthroat as, as the mainstream industry is or can be. Um but but yeah, if it's even if you're not in the market, it's worth looking at, at both cars and having a look at the tornado. And I, again, I don't know, which, I don't know what car they're going to bring, but it, it, yeah, I mean, it, even if you know that, then well, you should know that they're not real. Like it, you, you still get the same wire factor from from that GT40 shape and and from the mechanicals too. And, and even though it's sort of more at the top end, I know one of the options that tornado offer is this sort of basically complete kit in the box down to everything including the brake fluid where you basically buy you know your brand new kit and a bit like you know a, a very grown up airfix or lego kit you gradually put it together and off you go yeah i mean i mean that that's 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 the other thing that you really need to consider when you come to the show is how much do you want to be new because i mean obviously we'd all love to have a lego set and sort of build everything for you know, have all the bits ready and it's exactly as it is in the pictures, but it's also quite good to have the donor kits around as well, because you're going to save a lot of money. And the other advantage with a donor kit is you have the advantage of if you buy right, if you buy an MOT car is you can drive around, test the mechanicals before they go in. I know new components should be fine and they, they, they usually are, but it's, it really is a sort of pick and mix. And, and this is really why if you're interested in buying a kit car, you need to come to this show because you need to see, every kind of sort of kit car and it doesn't just come down to the kind of car you want to build but also how those kits are supplied to you uh, yeah most definitely most definitely and up last but certainly not least is westfield chesel who were the sort of the big camp comeback story of 2023 and you know put on a great display last year uh with the chesel speedster the porsche 5, 356 replica and obviously the westfield cars which are the, the 7s style and you know they seem to be sort of still doing really well at the moment 
Yeah, so uh, it's, it's, it's going to be great to see to see their display again because they've got another good range of just unusual replicas. I don't know if the 11 will be here this year. I sort of hope it will because that's, that's one of my favourites of theirs and it's that's been around for years and well, it keeps coming and going. But I have it on good authority that the yeah the 11 is going to be pushed a bit harder soon and this might be the show they do it at. I don't know. I hope so. Well, when we went to the factory uh, back in, I think, about February last year, that that was one thing that was on our, on their radar for 2024. So hopefully that, you know, I'm sure that would be a really popular kit if they got that back to market. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is available to buy. I, um, I, I yeah, I, I, I just think it's a terrific looking car. So I, I just want to see more of them on the road. Jack, that's been absolutely fantastic. I think we've sort of covered all the real high points there. Um, is there anything you'd like to add what's going on in the show and maybe what's going on on the, the CKC stand as well? So, I mean, yeah, like, like, like I said, it's, it's, we're going to have a display of cars. They're going to be some little cycle carts. They're going to be quite fun. But these are the ones that are going to be in our stand are all going to be sort of different stages of build. So we're going to be basically, if you sort of want to look into what goes into building the car, sure, it's not in full scale. Um, you're going to, you're going to have, a lot of them are quite related to the sort of, how the kits are supplied. A lot of them have sort of space frames and things like that. And if you're sort of interested in just seeing some mechanical bits going together, definitely come to our stand. If you want to look at some older kit cars, definitely come to our stand. And if you want to get some good deals on some old and new magazines and subscriptions, also please come to our stand because yeah, we're going to have quite a few things on and hopefully a few surprises. We're not, we've not finished uh, getting all those sort of hooked up, but yeah, there's, it's, it's going to be a good event and we're in a marquee that's attached to the main hall. Um, but yeah, we have our own space this year, which is, yeah, I'm quite excited to fill it. Brilliant. All sounds absolutely great. And what we will do is in the comments, oh, not the comments, we'll, in the description below, we'll put a link to the, the show website so you can find out all the details on tickets and how to get there and everything else you need to know on it. But I think the message is from Jack and myself, if you've got a kit car, you, you know, if you're going to go to one show this year, it's going to be this one because, you know, Malvern last year was a real big shot in the arm for UK kit car shows. It lost, I think, a little bit of its, what would you say, Jack, momentum, energy at Stonely? Yeah, there was, I mean, there was a few, there was a few people that said it's a bit too far to go, but I've spoken to some of those people and they saw the pictures from the event. I mean, we had great weather last year. We have great weather again, but I know a lot of people are going to make the trip this year who didn't do it last year. I think if, I think a few people were put off. Yeah, cause it's been, I mean, it'd been Stanley for yonks. I, don't, I mean, before I was born, sort of thing. Um, but I I I prefer the new the new venue. The new venue's cleaner. It's it's not cut up by HS two, um, which is a big thing because it means all the clubs are together. It was a bit sort of sad towards the end of Stanley where you'd have kits around the corner, kits over here, and. And sometimes people will leave on one of the days and then you've got a whole sort of field that's empty. This is really condensed, but in a good way, like it's big, but there's no gaps. You're not sort of walking to find the kit cars. You you go through the gate and you, you see them, you know, you can sort of see them from the car and know what you want to make the beelines for. I think you're hundred percent right. And I think it, what's, what's happened is it's found a really nice natural location that suits the size of the industry and the clubs. And, you know, because it's not, as you say, all spread out and sprawling all over Stonely, it's really great because everyone's quite close. And there was a really good sort of community feel within the club element. So I think that was great. Yeah, and I mean, the other thing is it's a beautiful part of the country. I know a lot of people, they went out went out for runs. There's some great pubs and stuff. It's, yeah, I mean, if you want to make a weekend of it, I highly recommend you would. I mean, I'm going to make a weekend of it because I'm going to be there all weekend, but it's it's a genuinely nice place to be. Um, and, I, and I hope it's, I, I, I hope, this is the new home for a good good amount of time. No, I agree totally. So the message from both of us, if you've got a kit car or you're interested in kit cars or you're thinking of building a kit car, you need to be at Malvern 1st and 2nd of June 2024. So click on the, uh, the link to the website below and get yourself organized and get yourself there. And as ever, thanks for watching.